Hi, this is Virtual Newsmakers, and we're coming to you live today with Robert Caruso of Bundle Post. Are you a business owner, or do you have trouble um, managing and balancing uh, your online presence and your social media and time management? How do you juggle it all? Um, we're here today with Robert Caruso. I'm here with my co-host Debbie Ellickson, and we'd like to kick off the show just a great conversation about how to find balance in social media. So, Robert, welcome to Virtual Newsmakers. Hey, long time no see. Great Hi. to be here. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. Uh, I Just a little bit of backstory. I met Robert several years ago via Twitter, and uh, there's, I've gained such an appreciation over time of his abilities online and when I first met him he was he had this idea about a social media automation program called Bundle Post which has been terrific to see it evolve and the irony is is that Robert is not just you know he's developed an automation tool to save people time but he is the most engaging person that I've seen on social media or one of them certainly so Robert welcome <laughs> Thank you. Yes, welcome. Um, just to get started and kick it off, can you tell us what inspired you really to get started with this idea of bundle posts and give us a little history? Sure. Um, we were an agency, um, so we did social media for clients around the world, mm -hmm. and um, you know everybody knows intuitively and you know uh, via day to day activity that. Social media is incredibly human intensive, but what what we found interesting was is the intuitive part of that isn't obvious. Meaning that where I thought we spent our time every day and where we actually spent our time every day was two different things. Okay. And so, um, in investigating that, we spent eighty percent of our time in the back office, so not stuff that makes money. Right. Stuff, not stuff that gets results in social media, not the engagement, the conversations, relationship building, all of that. It was in managing content, so searching for it, finding it, vetting it, editing it, scheduling it, hashtagging it, posting it all across the social graph. Right. And so it was just very apparent to me that um, that needed to change in our agency if we were going to continue to scale, grow, and be, be profitable. Um, and so we designed and developed something for us in-house, and it worked incredibly well, way beyond our expectations. And uh, it, we actually realized an 80% improvement in efficiency, effectiveness, and profitability. Wow. Oh, wow. It's a so, no-brainer. So, so, uh, <laughs> so your problem was, as an agency, figuring out how to manage the time of a larger group, <coughs> correct? Yeah, and how do we how do we do a couple things? How do we become more efficient with our time? Uh huh. How do we um, have consistency in our stream that wasn't connected to our time? Uh huh. So that we always had relevant, valuable content in the stream. It was always hashtag. How do you accomplish that with control? Right. No automating anything to the stream that was a requirement I had. So. What we automate is in the back office, um, and it's all about controlling every element of what is being done, um, and and making that very efficient. But the the third element was profitability. How can we handle eighty percent more clients with reducing staff and getting better results for those clients? That's a huge number and a mm -hmm. huge task. And so, yeah, we, we accomplished that. And what happened was I knew at that point that we would, we would become a software company. There's just no way around it. And so we spent 14 months turning it into a product, and, you know, off we went. Wow. So along the way, what lessons have you learned in building out this process, and what changes have you been able to make for your clients? You know, here, here's something that's really unique about Bundle Post um, as an organization, not just a product. Unlike 
I would say 95% of the social media tools of any type in, in the world today, we're not a bunch of gearheads that decided to make something for this incredible fast growing industry and so we could get rich, right? right. We're social media people who also have to ha happen to have technology backgrounds. Right. And so we, I had this conversation with my CTO yesterday. Probably the most interesting thing we learned, um, and and it even you know again came up yesterday, is that what we're finding is that every time we get a request for the technology from our users, it's already on our development list before we get it because we're social media people. So. <laughs> but what our users are going, wow, wouldn't it be nice? we have done six months ago and it's in queue and about ready to be finished, you know? Right. <laughs> so um, it's, very, it's a very unique thing. Every time we release um, a new, um, you know, uh, version release or in-between version upgrade releases and, and enhancements, everyone just goes, wow, I never even thought of that, but man, do I love it. And... So, I mean, that's one of the things that make us unique is we use our tech. We understand yes. what we built and the, the way to leverage it to be effective in the social graph. We've never done an ad, ever. All of our um, mm. growth has been due to our social, um, you know, marketing and doing it right. So. Well, I think it's a lot of things too, though. Robert, you're an exquisite uh, content creator. Your your voice is so clear and not corporate sounding um, online, and so you've been able to pull your voice into the social media realm, which is what makes social media very different from traditional marketing. Um, how would you suggest to business owners and whatnot about how to become more human online? And how to manage their time. I, you know, I, every, I'm a simple guy. You know, I, I mean, I really am, right? I mean, to me, everything has to be boiled down to simplicity. Otherwise, I don't get it, you know, and it's got to be a visual thing. So the way I explain it to people is this. Both with, you know, if you're creating content as well as engaging or in, in curating, which you should be doing all of those things um, a, a lot. But... What I tell people is social media is a parallel universe to the real world. If you want to understand social media, step out of social media and think about what do I do when I go to a networking event? Do those things in social media. What are the things I would never do because that would be embarrassing? It would piss everybody off. Nobody would ever want to do business with me. Don't do those things in social media. It's, it's yeah. not simple. <laughs> right? People try and make it so complex and they read, you know, article yeah. after article after article about how to be effective in social media. Right. It's just that simple. <laughs> be human. <laughs> Get yeah, real. Be, be, be yourself. I mean, yeah. you know, and not everyone's going to like you. Certainly everyone doesn't like me and I don't like everybody else and that's right. human and normal and, and all of those things. Um, and that's okay. Right? If you run around scared of uh, worrying about, you know, am I going to offend somebody? Well, yeah. You, if you're that careful, guess you probably will never offend anybody, but you also never get any results. Right. Exactly. But but you've seen it in in face to face networking, and you're certainly seeing it seems to be rampant in social media, where you you go to the face to face meeting and the guy jumps in your face and. Oh, you need to buy my product <laughs> before he even knows your name, and you also see that here, where in in social media. But uh, you know, so if you look at the automated post, how does automating your posts not make you look like that guy? Yeah, yeah. that's a great question. <laughs> I, I I think we have to I think we have to clarify what that means. That phrase of automated posts. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I, one of my one of the one of my quotes that, that always gets the biggest reactions every time we share it is this. Uh, it goes something like this. I don't remember the exact uh, phrase because it's saved in bundle posts. I don't have to remember it. But um, anyways, it's something to the effect of um, digging by hand when shovels are available does not make you authentic. It makes you ignorant. Okay? <laughs> That's so, great. Okay, so just so let's 
let's carry the analogy forward. Just because you happen to be at your desk posting something doesn't make you authentic, opposed to being smart and proactive and thinking ahead and strategizing, typing it and scheduling it, right? Yeah. Um, one is, you know, authentic, and the other is authentic with brains, I guess, is how I would put it. So, okay. So let's clarify. There's a lot of tools out there that will let you connect to a stream of content, RSS or whatever it might be, and no matter, you know, Triber or RSS and, or what, and whatever comes down the pipe, goes out the door, right. right, and out into your stream. Well, if you're a brand, you better not ever do that. <laughs> you might as well take your shoe off, stick it up on top of the desk, get your shotgun out, and just wait because you're going to blow your foot off. <laughs> Love my analogies, right? Yeah. Um, so so it, you really have to be in control. So now you have, you're really down to only a couple options. So you can run around the web every day like we used to as an agency, and whether you've yeah. got a plug in, you know, a buffer, a hooplet, or whatever, and manually, one by one by one by one, go after and do your editing manually and do and right. schedule those puppies, which is... A I'm guilty. Of I'm well, guilty. 5% of the people do. They have to, right? Yeah. There's yeah. not very many other options. Or you can say, these are all the Google alert topics, Bing alerts, uh, YouTube searches, um, uh, uh, Pinterest boards, stumble upon feeds. What are all the feed channels I want content from around you know these topics for these clients or my this program of mine or this product of mine, etc. And those they all come into bundle posts. Yeah. Okay. Four times a day we get the latest content. Where now you can control it, manage it, curate it. You can edit the text of the post, merge it with schedules. Um, run hashtags on it. Our system hashtags 100 posts in one second. Wow. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, but for the real business owner, this is yeah. the crux of the matter because you did say I'm a simple guy and, and I think that a lot of people need to be that simple guy being human online instead of the automator. I'm a control freak <laughs> over my own voice. Um, just I'm so you know. Italian. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get that. And, and, and the reality is is that I don't want to appear or seem automated. So I, But at the same time, I have to manage my time effectively as well. How do you, as a real person, business owner, manage your time effectively in a smart way and still maintain your voice? That is the huge question I have. Yeah, it, the answer is real simple. You have two choices. You can either spend 80% of your time managing content so that you have value in your stream all day, every day, or you can spend 80% of your time engaging, building relationships, and driving ROI. It's your choice. Yay. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I, I can't make it any more simple than that. Right. You only have two choices because if you are going to engage 80% of your time but you haven't got a uh, consistent, relevant, valuable content in your stream from the morning to the evening, every day, on every platform you need to be on, um, then guess what? There's no value in your stream. People look yeah. at your thread, and all you're doing is having these random conversations. They didn't see what started it. They move on. There's nothing of value there. Right. You, you have to do both, and you're either going to spend your time here or there, and that's the bottom line. Are you able to scale this to the brand level? Because one of the biggest problems I see with brands using social media is they're just not making that transition from traditional in-your-face <coughs> broadcasting all the time to um, allowing for that human voice and engagement. Um, are you able to, with this tool, scale to the enterprise level? Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I can't mention the name yet, um, but or, or names, I should say, but we have several major brands, everybody watching this would know, mm -hmm. um, using our technology, and um, all the way, you know, down to, you know, social media agencies, down to mom and pop restaurants, down to individual authors, consultants, whatever, okay, so 
it's a full full range capability with the technology. So the answer is yes, but there's a there's two things here. There's logistics, uh -huh. and there's mentality. Okay. Okay. So the logistics, yeah, I mean we've got that covered. Okay. The, the how do you execute this properly and efficiently and effectively? But there's a mindset, right? It right. Depends on the brand. So what I tell people is this: Look, if you're going to look at big brands for guidance and understanding of how to do social media, I can guarantee you, you will fail at social media. Guarantee I agree. You, every day, <laughs> you will die. Oh, yeah. The I was looking at one today, banging my head on the keyboard, just going, you guys have so much potential if you just be more <laughs> human and less brand. And, yeah. and they're not making that leap um, from traditional media to social media. And I think it's a, it's a detriment to their brand. And there are brands that are much better at being human than being brand. Yeah, there, there's a handful, I would say, yeah. that, are, that are good at social media from a brand corporate level. There's a handful. Mm -hmm. But the fact, yeah. the fact is this. I mean, let's step back for a minute and forget that we all love social media and it's part of it. It's in our blood and, and, and we, we see stuff and we immediately know, you idiot, right? <laughs> okay? I could have closed that idea for you if I was handling yourself, right? I mean, we've all done that. But let's yeah, forget. like, oh. Yeah, let's forget that for a sec and let's step <laughs> back. Okay, what you need to what what I would say to the audience is, guys, you need to understand. Okay, and let's take one of my favorite brands, which by the way I do not mention, do not engage with, do not follow anywhere on the social graph. I go to their place all the time at Starbucks. Uh, they have yeah, social media in the world, but let's be honest, they don't have to be good at social media. They spend. Right. Billions of dollars on branding, marketing, advertising, locations, uh, all of those things, um, right? So they're going to utilize it the way that fits with their corporate structure and their current mental beliefs. And nothing we say will ever change that. The only thing that will change that yeah. is um, a change in their customer base because of what they're doing. Right. Right. Well, that's a chicken or the egg. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some smart brands that you know. I mean, you know, look at you know Scott Monty. Are, are they uh, and Ford? Are they great? No, in my opinion, I don't think they're great. Are they better than a lot of them? Yeah. Okay, and he's he's leveraged big media. Yeah. With just this idea of social media, even though they don't always do a great job. <laughs> right. Right? So, you know, good for him, and that's awesome. I'm uh, a fan of Virgin and, and uh, Red Bull because I think those two brands um, excite people and still have the corporate um, voice but engage with people as well. And that is always impressive to me to see. Oh, it's what do you, speaking of, speaking of, uh, speaking of the, that, aspect of the brands and I don't think it is Starbucks that did this but what about that viral video that's going around kind of tied in with the Carrie movie where you know those those people go to a coffee shop and have the pants scared off of them because tables and everything are moving around what do you th but that seems to be a thing that some of these brands think they have to do to get on the map is scare the heck out of their customers or do something Bizarre sure. like that. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's I think it's fitting for the for what what the brand is. I, I don't even remember what brand it is, but I remember seeing the video, which is probably and that's a problem too. There's a problem, right? That's a problem. <laughs> okay, um, but but understand, they're looking at this as part of their digital strategy, uh -huh. not, not the core of who they are and what they do as a brand. So. You know, look, if you are a big brand, have already spent the billions of dollars, can do the production and have a movie coming out, you can spoof yourself, well then hell, you should do it, right? But but again, yeah. for the average person watching this or the average, you know, entrepreneur, solopreneur or brand out there, don't. And, yeah. and that's another point I want to bring up. Guys, look, people connect with people. Yep. I connect yeah. with people. 
people do business with me, not brands. Yeah. Okay? So if, if you're a new company or you're just getting in social media or have just been in social media for a few years, you don't have 150,000 followers, why do you have your logo on your Twitter account? Can you explain that to me? People don't <laughs> right. connect with People don't connect with logos and companies they've never heard of. They buy from people they feel they know and like. Be yeah. someone they can know and like. And and as you grow your brand and your audience and you've earned relationships, we're going through this now, right? People have connected. Bundle Post is Robert. Robert is Bundle Post. Yeah, that's it. Right? Yeah. And yeah. I have my picture on both my accounts, my Fondalo and Bundle Post. Now there's a logo but it's still Robert. Yeah. And that will continue to migrate till there's a separation between Robert and brand, and it has to. It's part of the process. But, guys, we've been at this for a while, you know? Yeah. If, if, if you've got, you know, a 1,000 followers, I suggest you quit pretending. Why are you using your company hashtag? Nobody's following it. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> please, please don't do that, right? Just <laughs> quit wasting that energy and time. Right. And, and engage and, your process. And, and letters on Twitter. <laughs> Those are characters wasted. Yeah. <laughs> it's know. nuts. It's nuts. <laughs> but, you know, look. Look. The first time I went to a networking event, I wanted to hit everybody. I just, you know, right? I didn't know what I was doing. Right? right. I'm like, what? You know? I yeah. mean, that's just me. So we, we, we have to be careful. If we're going to lead and change and improve yeah. this industry. There has to be a grace about it. Yeah, sometimes it really requires, you know, boom, to get the point across. Right. But we really got to, we got to lead and we got to do instead of just teach and talk. Yeah, I agree. And you just, you just hit on something there too, Robert, because while the face-to-face -face networking event, you get, you know, when you're, when you're learning the ropes and you're learning how to network, because a lot of people don't know how to network, and they go to those events, they still go back to those events even if they're not working, but on social media, the mindset is, oh, well, I tried social media, it doesn't work, so we're not doing it anymore. That's the corporate mindset of, of a lot of companies. Well, I mean, and there's a, again, I'm a simple Italian guy, so the, the response to that's real simple. I tried to make a rocket once, but I'm not a rocket scientist, and it didn't work. <laughs> Right? Love it. I mean, hello, right? Okay. <laughs> well, if you want to try and build a rocket, but you're not a rocket scientist, guess what? It's it's not going to work. If you want to build <laughs> an integrated social and online marketing program, and you don't know it, I, I can assure you it's not going to work. So you better find a rocket <laughs> scientist or a digital strategy to do it for you. Yeah. And so hire you the people that, that have know. done it. You know, there that's... That's the whole thing. They're hiring interns and MBAs that have gotten their social media degree, but that haven't even built their own followings. And I just am like, <laughs> you know, that just doesn't make sense to me. So, Guys, um, one, on that point, I just think it's important to note. Okay, we all know the twelve people that are at every event and are always yes. the keynote speakers and whatever, right? Okay. We all know we can look at their feeds. We all know what they do for a living, and it's not social media. It's right. this, okay? Who do you think the brands are hiring to consult them on their social media? The talkers and not the, well, they are doers too. Well, some are. Some are. Some of them are, and the reason why I say that is they put their content first. They create content. A lot of these speakers and people that have made it, and that's I think really critical to understand. And it's one of those things that you do. You create content, and let's not be, just automate. But let's be clear. Let's mm -hmm. be clear. Okay. If I'm speaking at five to twelve events a month, mm -hmm. I'm traveling all over the place. I um, am writing two books a year. I have an assistant I have to manage. I have, you know, a, a, or is it that a plus? I'm consulting big brands. Yeah. How am I writing a blog or two a day? Right. Yeah. So let's be real. They're not writing their blog posts, majority of them. That's true. And, right. And so when 
when we know these are the folks that are consulting the big brands, do we have any question as to why the big brands suck at social media? <laughs> but yet they get all the press, which is what they're trying to get anyways, and that's okay. But all I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. the reason for this is, guys, whoever's watching out there is this. Don't look to the big brands. Find yeah. people that are doing it and getting results. That's True, exactly. what you want to model. Sorry. No, I think that's really great. And and to identify also where you best want to spend your time. Because what I see from you from the outside, having watched you for years and having had a relationship over, you know, digital media, is that you create content, you also are terrific about the automation aspect which doesn't feel automated and you engage. So it, what you're saying is you've created a tool that will help people be able to create more content and engage more, spend their time on the things that matter on social media and less time on the things that don't. Is that correct? In short, yes, that is absolutely correct. Okay. Most of our users, even the solopreneur, it's ROI using our software, which sometimes people say is expensive, in a mm -hmm. week. Okay, well, what's your time, mm -hmm. time worth? Do you want to spend $100 a month and have 80% mm -hmm. of your time back? Or do you want to keep your $100 a month and keep doing what you're doing and getting the same results? Right. I, and I just, it's, again, it's simple. Yeah. It's math. Is your time worth more than 80% of your time worth more than $100? Probably, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and the results connected with that. Yeah, I gotcha. You know, so it's... it's There's just, your advertising slug line. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So tips for, for solopreneurs, because we've kind of talked about brands, for solopreneurs and, and small businesses, do you have any thoughts for them in relation to social media? Yes. Number one, you must understand what is your goal and objective with your social media. Why are you doing what you're doing? And you better be very, very specific. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you're not going to hit it. Okay. Two, know who your audience is. It's not everyone. Right. So let me just give you a clue. It's not. And if you're a local restaurant, it's still <laughs> not everyone in your right. market. Who is your target audience? Next. What are they interested in? Not what you do, what industry you're in that they would also be interested in. What are they interested in? When they're on social media, what do they click like? What do they click through? What do they comment on? And what do they share? Those are the topics you need to dominate, providing selfless, relevant value to your audience. That's 80% of your stream. And when I say 80%, guys, I'm talking 20 minimum, 20 scheduled posts a day on Twitter, minimum. Otherwise, yep. nobody is seeing it, okay? Then you will earn the right to share your stuff, your blog posts, your specials, your deals, etc. cetera, okay? Um, and then lastly is you have to have a big enough community to get results. Think of it as a radio station. If you're gonna, you have a great ad, you find the perfect radio station to run that ad on because it's a, totally your target audience, but there's only 60 listeners, you can sell every one of them, and you're never going to make any money. You'll never what, get a return on what you spent. What you just outlined is a beautiful social media strategy. And what is. happens is, is a lot of people are still stuck in the tactics right? and not really understanding the larger overall strategy. And you can see it a mile away. It's, so. it's just no doubt. This, that's what I just outlined is my four-step strategy. I mean, that's it. Um, I counted six steps. Okay, step one, <laughs> step one, goal and objective. Step two okay. is who's my audience. Step yep. three is what's my content strategy. Okay. What's the 80-20 mix? And then lastly is um, community growth. Okay. Where, who already has my community built? Who's already built my target audience? Let's go find who those Twitter accounts are and follow the people either they're following or the people that are following them. You got to look at the account to determine, yeah. you know, which of those scenarios. I mean, it's it's really a no-brainer. You've got to get to if you're a local, you know, solopreneur, entrepreneur, 
if you have to have a minimum of 2,000 targeted followers tomorrow. Right. Period. So that being said, every show we end with a challenge of the week, and it could be absolutely the first thing that comes to your mind. So if you could challenge business owners, millennials, or anybody out there in the world, what would you challenge them to do this week to make a difference? Well, I would say next week since it's Friday. So next week, my, <laughs> challenge, to you, <laughs> my challenge to you would be is figure out those four things and then execute it. So for one week straight, ensure just your Twitter. Um, the quantity I'll talk about here is just for Twitter. So post 20 times a day of stuff that's interesting, relevant, and valuable to your target audience every day and make sure it's hashtagged for the appropriate hashtags your audience will follow. You're going to notice immediately you will get more shares, more clicks, more comments, more um, conversations, you will get more followers, and you will get more results. At the same time you do that, spread out three times a day the things that are about you, what you do, your about page, your special, your whatever, three times a day in between that, at least three, three to five. Um, and um, last of this little challenge is when somebody retweets, thank them. Not 12 hours or 24 hours from now. Keep this with you and do it in 30 seconds, in a minute, in 30 minutes, in an hour tops. That's okay? a great one. <laughs> if, if you do those things I just said, you will see an immediate jump. And if you continue to consistently do that every day, not only for that week, but continue beyond that, you will start to see results in your social media. You have nice. to be consistent, and it has to be about selfless, relevant value. There's my challenge. I'll shut up now. I love selfless, relevant <laughs> value. How do how do business owners and brands reach out to you? Should they want to test out and try Bundle Post? Simple. BundlePost.com. Click the big button that says Get free trial. You have a three, <laughs> uh, 30 day full pro version unlimited everything trial of bundle post, unlimited support, and even if you request it um, when you log in, live one on one setup and training with our support team. Nice. Very uh, nice. You have come a long way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <laughs> we um, announced uh, uh, last week we are now managing 1.5 million pieces of content a month. Wow. Nice. Mm -hmm. well, this has <laughs> been an awesome. absolute pleasure, as always. Um, we're going to end out today's show with Robert's challenge um, to be consistent, to share, and to thank you and be responsive. And selfless, relevant posts. More. 20 of them, right? Yeah. Ones you find. Don't retweet. I mean, you need to retweet, but you need 20 of yours that you found that's interesting for your audience. Yes. Awesome. And if you want some help with your social media management, time management, check out bundlepost.com. Anyway, um, we're going to round out today. This is Virtual Newsmakers. We'll be here with you next Tuesday and next Friday. We're now doing two shows a week. Yes. We're very excited to announce that. Um, if you have learned anything today or gotten anything of value from today's show, uh, please reach out to us. Any comments, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Virtual Newsmakers, and we look forward to seeing you all more next week. Talk to you soon. <laughs>